between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Saw through the shadows of my soul The work is finished The end is written Jesus Christ, my living God, who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory. To wear my sin and bear my shame The cross has spoken, I am forgiven The King of kings calls me his own Beautiful Saviour, I'm yours forever Jesus Christ my living God and Hallelujah Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ My living God Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning that sailed the promise Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me and Jesus yours is the victor Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living God. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. The salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living God. Jesus Christ, my living God. God, you are my living God. Hello and good morning and welcome to today's service from St Mary's Parish Church, Frinton on Sea. My name's Don Smith, and I'm the rector here. Here's an opening prayer for us. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. Let us follow you out of darkness. You are the door. Let us enter the Father's presence in your name. 
You are the good shepherd. Let us rest in your provision. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and true victory in you. You are the way, the truth and the life. Let us love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Shadows by Winifred Barnes When the shadows close around you in a cloak of dark despair, when your pain is overflowing and life seems too hard to bear, truly Jesus walks beside you. He will guide you when you stray. Fold his tender arms around you. Gently wipe your tears away. When you're wandering in the darkness, Vainly searching for the light, fears and torments all around you in the black and lonely night. He's walking there beside you. He will answer when you call. He will catch you when you stumble, lift you up each time you fall. When a woman, sick and feeble, was despairing of a cure, she reached out to touch his garment and her sickness was no more. Why he loves the lonely sinner, we can never understand. But his precious love is boundless. Just reach out and take his hand. And so to our sermon for this morning. This is the second sermon in our series on overcoming. And this is a reading from the Old Testament from the first letter of Samuel, chapter 22. David, that's King David, David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, they went down there to him. All those who were in distress or in debt or discontented gathered around him, and he became their commander. About 400 men were with him. So this sermon is entitled, How to Behave in a cave. Poor old David, he was having a really hard time. He had lost every crutch he had that could have been there to take the place of God. He had lost his, his position, his wife, his prophet friend, his friend Jonathan, and finally he lost his self-respect. So David, without a country to call a home, takes shelter in a cave. He has hit rock bottom, if you'll pardon the pun. In a matter of days, David has gone from living in a palace to living in a hole in the side of a hill. Remember that David has no security, no food, no one to talk to, and very little to look forward to. He was alone in a dark cave, away from his family and friends. It doesn't get much bleaker than that. David has a severe case of, woe is me. But he remembers to call out to God. Then I pray to you, O Lord, I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want in life. When your life is in a cave, a cave God may have brought you to, so he could remove all the crutches in your life, then your first mode of behavior should be like David's. The first thing he did was to call out, cry out to God. In the midst of David's lowest point, he never lost sight of his father in heaven. How different that is from so many people, even Christian people, who have gone through difficult times and wonder where God is. If you've ever been at that point in your life, you know just what I'm talking about. But it's precisely at this point where God can say, hang on, not so fast. I I didn't die on the cross to leave you alone. I said I would never leave you, ever. Now, and only now, can I change the course of your life. Before this, you were in control because you had the tools to control your life. Now that you have nothing, I can finally be your Lord and remould you into the person you were meant to be in the first place. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. 
But until we're finding ourselves in a cave, we may never know just what it means to let God truly be God in our lives. When you feel like you're in a cave, the first and best thing you can do is cry out to God. Next, David declared his dependence. Here we see David realising his life is in God's hands. He's looking for God to protect him. God's protection comes to us by being in God's presence. When you can no longer take care of things yourself, you must declare your dependence on God. Many good church-going people want Jesus to be their saviour, but they're not too keen on actually letting him be their Lord. They might want to be saved from the penalty of sin, but they don't necessarily want that salvation to impede or encroach upon their life. Encroach upon their life. They want the comfort of knowing that they're saved, but they don't necessarily want to bring other people into the kingdom. They might want to ask for forgiveness for their sins, but they don't necessarily want to live in obedience to all of Christ's teaching. According to the Great Commission in Matthew's Gospel, to be a disciple and to make disciples means we are personally investing in the lives of others. And this is all terribly inconvenient, really. It means we will have to invest the one thing that means more to us than money, our time. We would rather pay someone to take our neighbour to the shops than actually drive them there ourselves. We'd rather pay someone to work for the church than to do that work ourselves. We'd rather buy someone a book on finances than commit them to going, commit yourself to going to their house for six weeks and taking them through the the book of accounts and teaching them through your own example of how to manage their accounts and their finances. I'm very glad that Jesus didn't send someone else to do his work on earth. He came personally. He took time away from his thrown in heaven to invest his life and then his death so he could make disciples. What are we willing to invest to make disciples? It will cost us our time, our talents, our personal touch, and yes, even some of our treasure. But that is what it means to be a disciple. We've seen how David acted in a cave. Let's see who David attracted to the cave. It says in the text, when his brothers and the rest of his family heard he was there, they went down to be with him. Well, not only did David's family come to him, but look at all the others that showed up. There was the distressed. The Hebrew word for distressed also means under pressure, under stress, in anguish. So David is cowering in a cave and a bunch of distressed people turn up. That's all he needed. Then come the debtors. The Hebrew word for those debtors means to have a number of creditors. These were people who couldn't pay their bills. Then we see the discontented. The Hebrew word here means to be in bitterness of soul and to have been wronged and mistreated. This seems like a really rough deal, doesn't it? When you're running for your life and all you have left is a cave to live in and a God to cry out to. The last thing you want is a bunch of family members who didn't want you around a while back and a group of malcontents coming to hang around with you. But these were just the people God died for in Jesus. Sometimes you can invite people to come into the kingdom of God and sometimes God sends people for you to lead into the kingdom of God. David took this motley bunch of debt-ridden, distressed and discontented people and used them to form his army and his cabinet. He treated them with respect and the leadership they deserved. So here's a question for you. Has God brought people into your life? People who may be distressed and needing companionship. People who are in debt and need a lesson on how to handle money. If you've been through a cave experience, you may be the person to help others learn 
how to behave in a cave. That's what David did. Can God count on you and on me to do the same? We all know people who are discontented or in debt or distressed in some way in their life. And God, for some weird and humorous reason, has brought them into your life. The question for all of us is, what are we going to do with them? Are we going to wish they would go away? Did someone care enough for you and help you get out of your cave and become a disciple of Jesus? Are you willing to behave in a way that brings glory to God and brings disciples into his kingdom? Well, if we follow David's example of how to behave in a cave, we will have a good chance of being the people that our Father in heaven needs us to be. Amen. The theme of today's prayers is friendship. Dear Lord, in the challenging and stressful time of COVID, we have all had to lean on each other much more. Thank you for the many friendships that have propped us up and really shown the best of our human nature. Without these friendships, the days of worry and isolation would have been a lot harder. Dear Lord, you gave us the ability to love and give selflessly, following in the footsteps of Jesus. When we feel we are empty and cannot give, when we are angry and do not want to give, when we feel hey, I'm the one most in need here. Please bless us with your grace and help us to dig deep and continue to help our friends. Dear Lord, wrap in love those of us who are in need of friendship. Perhaps we have lost dear friends to COVID or old age or illness. Bless us with the will and humility to let our need be known and with the energy to form new bonds of friendship with those we are not yet connected to. And finally, dear Lord, you are the most loyal, loving friend any person could have. You see deep into our souls our very being, and you love us totally. We love you too, and we are very grateful for your arms of love which surround us and support us every day of our lives. Amen. And now let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so to our blessing for today. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon.